Cuyuna, the Credit Union National Association, is proud to present Real Life 101 with your host, Joel Chrysler. Together, we're working to educate parents, teachers, and kids about the valuable financial lessons needed for today and in the future. This is Real Life 101. As children are entering middle school, they're beginning to grasp more and more complex issues surrounding money. This is an important time to continue to grow their personal finance, vocabulary, and experiences. They may be starting to earn money babysitting, doing other odd jobs, or even more possibly through an allowance. They will start to see the influences of advertising and the beginnings of peer pressure will begin to show more and more. They'll pay attention to the latest styles, video games, and opportunities to hang out with friends. This will require, if you as parents choose, an ability to raise and manage money so they can take part in this new stage of their lives. Remember, it's okay for you as a parent to help them be more responsible to contribute to these things. In fact, it may make them appreciate them more if they have to provide all or even some of the financing for themselves. The middle school years are a great time to teach some very valuable life lessons. Because students will be asked to pay closer attention to their own finances, it is also appropriate to encourage them to learn some of the economics in the world around them. This podcast will examine the economic and personal finance concepts your child should know by the time they're in middle school. It's important to begin to challenge your child to learn more and be more responsible about money at this age. Learning the lessons I will share with you will make the next phase of their economic lives easier to understand. So let's take a look at what you, as parents, should teach your kids by middle school. We can break down this information into two key areas, economic concepts and being an effective consumer. Within those two areas, we'll take a deeper look into a few more specifics. It's important to remember that this does not need to be a sit-down, lecture-type format with your child. There are going to be many great, real-life opportunities to share these concepts, and I hope to give you some insight and ideas of how to teach these to your child. Let me share the concepts I feel are important within the two areas I mentioned before. Within the economic concepts, it's important to talk about taxes, unemployment, minimum wage, and inflation. As you heard those, you may be wondering, is it really important for my middle school child to know these things? I think we should look at it this way. These mature economic concepts are being discussed in the news and in the world around them. Parents should take the opportunity to address these subjects before they're allowed to scare children or cause them to cower away from financial education. You might think back to your childhood and think, I never learned about those things that early. So to that I ask, would you have been better off learning it earlier? I truly believe the answer is yes. Basic economics does not need to be boring. If we put it into the context of real life experiences and examples, the lessons will be easy to comprehend and have a lasting effect on our kids. The second area is one that I think will provide some real life skills to your middle schooler and that's being an effective consumer. Things like budgeting and spending, saving and investing, credit, and charity. These areas will definitely help pave the way for a smart financial future. I feel a great part of these lessons is that it will help us as parents evaluate and reevaluate how we in our personal lives handle our money and finances as well. Let's begin taking a deeper look into the first topic, economic concepts. There are many situations where we can begin to teach our child about taxes. I believe the most appropriate definition for taxes is that it is the price we pay for government. As your child wonders why they have to pay sales tax on their pack of gum or video game, share with them why the government needs the money to operate. On your way home, you can point out the fact that the roads you're driving on need to be paid for. As you pass by and wave to your neighborhood police officer, you can share that they need to be paid for their work. Whenever they see the president, governor, or members of Congress on television or the Internet, you can tell them that they too need to be paid, and it's the decisions that they make that help us all enjoy certain things that need to be paid for. Taxes raise that money to provide those services to us. Your child may hear about the unemployment rate and be curious about its meaning. You can share that it is the hope that every person in our country has an opportunity to work and provide for their families. Having that job also means that a portion of what they make will go to help people that have fallen on hard times. Some Americans can't find work, and this is called being unemployed. Some of what we make goes to help these people on what we hope is a temporary basis. The goal of our country and government is to make sure our people have opportunities to work, and if they can't find any, we will assist them. 
As your child begins to think about and talk about work, sharing some information on the minimum wage in this country is appropriate. You can tell them that our current minimum wage is $7.25 per hour. It's the topic of a lot of discussions and arguments throughout the country. Some feel it's not high enough and that people who are working deserve more. Some feel it's appropriate for jobs that require minimum skills. You could talk about what jobs deserve more pay or even what they think a fair minimum wage would be. This also can lead into a discussion on the final topic, inflation. Inflation is a rise in the level of prices. When they see the cost of their favorite snack go up, that's inflation. Inflation can be caused by many things. When gas prices go up, it means that things will cost more because transportation will go up. We can relate inflation to the minimum wage as well. If businesses need to pay their workers more, we can expect prices to follow and rise as well. As you can see, these topics, though some see as advanced, can be explained in relatively simple and straightforward terms. Look for opportunities as you're watching television, driving down the street, out to eat in a restaurant, or sitting at the dinner table. You'll be surprised how much your child really does want to know. The second area that you should teach your kids about by middle school has to do with being an effective consumer. A consumer is someone that uses or buys goods and services. It's important for your child to know that they are important to our nation's economy. The money that they spend adds to the economic prosperity of our nation. They also have rights and responsibilities as a consumer. The first part of being an effective consumer is to know about budgeting and spending their money wisely. A good budget should account for expenses they might have, the income they expect to earn through allowance, work, and gifts. Understanding that they cannot spend more than they have is a valuable lesson to learn. The budget will help them organize how to make their money last and to even put some away for saving. It also leads to responsible spending. When buying things, encourage your child to look for information beyond advertising claims to make a decision. If your child has more of a stake in their decisions, they'll learn valuable lessons. The next area in being an effective consumer is saving and investing. As your child becomes more responsible for their choices, it's important to share how making good decisions can have rewards, both short-term and long-term. Savings is hopefully a concept that has already been established. The importance of putting money away for future purchase. Middle school is also a great time to share the value of long-term saving or investing. Introduce how time and interest rates can affect the value of savings is very appropriate. Sharing information on how to calculate interest by multiplying the principal amount, the interest rate, and the time of the loan or investment can lead to some great conversation on how to build wealth. Taking the time to share some of the financial assets you're invested in, like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, IRAs, or Roth IRAs, can really open your child's eyes to the reality of creating future wealth for themselves. I know sometimes it's uncomfortable to share your personal information like this. You don't have to disclose everything, but your influence will make a difference. The middle school years are also a great time to introduce some basic credit facts. You can share that there are benefits to using credit to finance long-term purchases that last a long time. But the benefits to using credit to make daily purchases are short-lived and don't add up over time because of the costs of borrowing. You can share that the cost of credit is referred to as interest and that this adds to the overall cost of borrowing. A simple discussion of how credit cards work is great. If we don't pay off what we charge each month, the bank will charge us extra. So that pair of shoes you want but don't actually need could end up costing more than what the price tag says. Is that really worth it? One last area I feel is valuable in being an effective consumer is a discussion of charity. Your child is in an age where they can understand the need for it and the importance of the willingness to give. Encourage them to give of their time to help others. Encourage them to set aside a portion of what they get or what they make to give to others. The spirit behind this selfless act is immeasurable. Sharing economic and financial literacy lessons with your middle school child is essential to creating a wise consumer of the future. I hope these ideas will assist you in creating the necessary dialogue with your child. It's never too early to prepare our kids for Real Life 101. Thanks for listening to Joel Chrysler and Real Life 101. 
Chrysler is a teacher, financial literacy advocate, and internet radio host. He's an annual attendee of the Jumpstart National Educators Conference, recipient of the Economics Wisconsin and Robert W. Baird Excellence in Teaching Award, a two-time Governor's Award winner for financial literacy, and an advisory member to the Governor's Council on Financial Literacy for the state of Wisconsin. For more information and resources, please check out Kiuna's Financial Resource Center. Visit reallife101.net. And be sure to like Real Life 101 on Facebook. Together, we can educate our kids and ourselves to make wise financial choices to create a brighter and more prosperous future. This has been Real Life 101.